Hello everyone, Alistair here and it is a beautiful, cold, sunny day in Florida, actually. Um, well, to Oregon standards, it's beautiful. I'm used to this. This is a very comfortable day for me, actually, in the 60s. But everyone else is completely losing their mind and freezing. But anyways, enough of that. Let's get to the topic at hand. Today, we're going to be working on my Wagoneer. So, let me flip you around and show you what's going on. So today I'm going to be taking out my instrument cluster. I've already had it out once before because I did the... Oh, focus, focus. Okay, let's do this. I already had it out once because I replaced the uh, ammeter. I swapped it out for a voltmeter. And I actually took the gauges apart and painted all the needles. Well, needless to say, um, as you can see, I tried to clean up the machined turned aluminum overlay and it just wasn't cleaned up very well and my girlfriend was watching me do this at the time and well she is this is how I know well one of many reasons why I know my girlfriend's a keeper is because well she went out of her way and she figured out which overlay I needed and she ordered it for me and surprised me with it so I got a brand new overlay to put on here so I'm gonna pull it back out take this old overlay out and then while I'm at it I got a new um, temperature gauge I'm going to put in as well. So I'm going to show you just a quick steps to pull a cluster out of a 19, let's see here, I believe this is like mid 70s to 1984, this is, or 85 is the last year of this cluster. So if you have a Wagoneer in that era, or Cherokee, or J10, this all pertains to you. All right, so let's get started. So, what you're gonna need. So first off, you need a Phillips screwdriver, and we're gonna take off this guy here, which I already have mine apart. Actually, it's more or less broken from the previous owner. So what you do is you come under here, and you remove this Phillips screwdriver here, and that one that's supposed to be right there. And then if you look back here, see, there is a Phillips screwdriver right, or screwdriver, Phillips screw right there. So remove those four, and then this will be able to separate like so. And then in theory, if this was not all busted up, there's actually Two Phillips screwdrivers on the dash, <laughs> screws. I don't know why I keep saying screwdrivers. Screws on the dash that are held on by. Oh, actually, scratch that. I have that backwards. This would be held on like so. So actually, you'd want to remove. See, sorry, I'm learning with you because obviously this was already busted. So I didn't really take it, I have to really take it apart, it just kind of fell apart. But you'd actually have to remove these two screws first that hold this guy together like so. So go like this. So you'd have to go sneak in like I showed you to get to these two screws. And then you could take that off. And then you can remove the bottom screws that I showed you. And then you'll be having to remove those screws to pull this all apart so do that don't break this because you know just like all these parts your pieces they're hard to come by and I'm not trying to probably fix that one or see if we can find another one so now that we did that what we're gonna do next is I'm sorry rotate you here hopefully I'm not giving you motion sickness so next up is I'm gonna drop the steering column now you might be able to finesse it past steering column but you can see it's quite a quite an angle that steering column comes up and it, it just makes it that much of a bear to take this cluster out with the steering column in the way and you gotta remember these comp these clusters i mean this is an 84 you know this is almost 40 year old cluster so the last thing you want to do is go 
causing any kind of obstructions and really manhandling this hard because you, you risk the chance of breaking it. And I mean, you can find another cluster out there, but most likely you're gonna pay an arm and a leg because you don't really see these in the junkyards anymore. So keep that in mind. Be very delicate. All right, so bear with me. I'm gonna go grab a socket to drop the steering column. You'll need a 916 deep socket to get to this nut up here. It's one and two. And I'm gonna use my impactor to zip it off and you'll be able to just kind of lower it and let the whole steering wheel rest on the seat there. And that will give you enough room to pull this out. Now I kind of have an extra advantage because as you can see, my little shifter bezel here, that sh indicator that shows park, neutral, reverse, etc., is currently off because I took it all apart to replace this guy, which I have a new little indicator to replace that too. I just haven't got around to actually put it all together. But, and then I replaced this light bulb while I was at it. All right, enough talk. Let me go get some tools, I'll be right back. As you can see, look at this wiring mess that's here underneath here. I'm gonna do something about that too. This thing's been through the ringer, just like any old vehicle. Come on off that. Really? There we go. Now, when you go to do this, granted, usually these don't like just completely fall. Sometimes they do though. So go very slowly with taking the nuts off because the last thing you want to do is knock your ass in the head. That makes sense. Knock your ass in the head. You know what I mean. Don't want to knock yourself out. Yeah, see, that's not going right now but I know like on my Cherokee I did this once on my little X tray and about freaking knocked my self out that's for sure all right so see you'll have some play in it now where I'll be able to pull pull this down and kind of zip this out if you want more play these two bolts back here they can zip out too I'm not gonna do that because I've done this once before I was able to actually pull it down enough to pull this cluster out so we're just gonna leave it like that but like if you did drop this you just let it rest here on the seat i will be playing plenty out of the way all right next step oh. Oh. god sorry anyways i uh there's a Cherokee right there I just ran into. Shouldn't have parked it that close. Anyways, I forgot one important step. Disconnect the negative battery cable. Do I always do this? No, I should, it's a safe thing, but I'm really doing it, especially on in this instance with the instrument cluster on these, and I'll show you why here in just a little bit. Okay, let's not run into that Cherokee again. All right, next up is to remove the Phillips screws that are holding the instrument cluster to the dash. Now, as you can see, I'm missing a couple, as you might be too. Because some of you have been in here before, I messed around with this, but you got one, two, uh, three, four, focus, 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 four, five and six. So I'll remove those screws before I can continue. Be right back. All right, here we go. Now, I would definitely advise, of course, just with that like any job, you can always take pictures as you do the job and then of how things were connected and how things were placed before you start taking stuff apart. Especially if you have poor memory, like I do. Why do you think I'm videotaping this? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but 
Also, it's a good idea to put these screws and anything you take apart, like hardware wise, in a bag or somewhere safe where you're not going to lose them and maybe even label them so you don't lose them. Or you just throw them on the ground like I'm going to do. No, I'm just kidding. I'm going to be a little bit more professional. I am going to put it in the ashtray. That's a, that's a safe spot, right? Even with the million screws in there. Perfect. All right. So now we got those screws actually too. Screws are easier. Screws everywhere. Don't get screwed by losing your screws. <laughs> See what I did there? Okay. So now we got this unscrewed. And as you can see, this one is, now like I said, be very careful when doing this because you run the risk. I mean, this is fragile. This is, I mean, this has been sun baked and frosted and frozen and just worked for freaking, you know, 40 years almost. So be careful. It's delicate. Fragile. All right, so you can pull it back now, wiggle it, get it kind of loose. Now, it's time to get behind the dash to get to the back of the cluster to remove a couple things so you can pull it back far enough. So let's do that now. All right, so now you can go do this one of two ways. You can go up from underneath and stick your hand back there, up there with your headlamp and seeing where you're at. Me though, uh, I'm pretty fortunate and uh, I have the glove box insert delete right now so I can reach my hands back there and take the speedometer cable off the speedometer cable it just twists off granted um, you might have to try to pry this back disconnect some of the electrical connectors to see if you can pull this back further to get to it if it's really caked on there luckily fortunately for me I've already had it off so I can screw it and screw it back in pretty easily but sometimes they are bare they they don't like to come off so you might have to disconnect, like I said, some of the connectors first uh, to pull this cluster out further. So, oh, right here. So, this is the speedometer cable. Right now, I'm just twisting it off here. And I can push that to the side here. Now, I should have enough play in it, too, to pull it back even further without disconnecting any. All right, so now I can pull it out quite a bit, as you can see. Now see, what I was talking about here, I can pull down and get this to pull out a little bit better. Actually, usually I put a little, be a smart move to put a little terry cloth or towel right below where this cluster is sitting to protect the cluster. And if your paint, if your column is painted, really, is still in really good shape, you don't want to scratch it. But now we can start unplugging things. And now, before you do so, if you don't, if you're never taking this apart and don't know where all every plug goes or every light goes, because there's tons of little lights that you plug in here, uh, like this one here, you want to go through and label or take pictures again. Label will take pictures of where all these connectors come from. Pictures are usually better, just because if the label falls off. At least you have a picture reference to go to and go, where did this guy go? Oh yeah, he went to hole number A. Yeah, hole number A? I don't know. As you can see, I'm such a professional. Oh, so, like this guy here, as you can see, maybe you can't, but this wire is starting to come out of this connector that's disconnected. So now would be a good time to grab your phone and take a picture of this because this is so loose right now, I guarantee you, I'm going to set this to the side and it's probably going to fall apart, but fall right out of the plastic connector piece, the little terminals. But if you take a picture of it, at least you know where, what uh, terminal cavity each terminal went into. Oh, and there it goes. See? Okay. Luckily, I know, I know where it goes. So, all right. Stay tuned. I'm going to take some stuff apart and I'll show you of the cluster right now and you see these two posts here these are the two posts they're the reasons why i said 
disconnect the battery negative cable because these although right now they aren't because the way I swapped them but uh, if you have your original ammeter you have 12 voltage 12 volts constant to these terminals so you don't want to run the risk of arcing it on something as you're on the dash or whatever as you're pulling it out so or have these wires arc on something when you take these wires off set them it back into the dash just to get them out of the way so it's always best to disconnect the battery cable negative and that's what we that's the big reason why we did so this time around all right so now i think if i remember correctly those are like five sixteenths or three eighths can you even see on the east end of the video but yeah i think they're five sixteenths so i'm gonna loosen those guys and then it's just a matter of unplugging more connectors and lights Except on this side here. Let's see if I can uh, not break anything there. Move this back and forth. Here. Okay, there we go. Alright, again, before you disconnect. Oh, that's why. There we go. So you. For the heater controls, you'll have these vacuum hoses here. Take a picture of these before you remove them so you know where each hose is supposed to go. Because these vacuum hoses, uh, one is straight from engine vacuum, the canister and the engine bay, and the other ones are mainly to go to all the blend doors and the heater box. Oh, that's one side note I should make. Um, as you can see, on a lot of you guys' wagon ears, you'll have the AC box underneath the dash. You'll have to remove that to, well, not the whole thing, just this portion that goes underneath the steering column to before you do any of this, um, which is just, if I remember correctly, it's uh, just some screws and some little uh, felt tappers, but you have to remove that before you can drop the steering column and all that. So, fortunately, I don't know what happened to the original one. Somebody had taken it out. But, that, fortunately for me, I found a guy that restores these Wagoneers and he had some extra parts and he had a whole AC box for me with the patchy color. So that was perfect. But that's a video for another day. All right, so back to this. So we're gonna take these vacuum lines off. Man, up here, if you can see, can't see because the damn camera is not one of Alright, hang on, let's Okay, so here, again, I already removed the vacuum lines. Took a picture of it just to make sure I don't put them in the wrong place. But there's this, this is your, uh, this is for the, um, this is the uh, heater box cable for the bun door. It slides back and forth. So it has this little push nut keeper on it. So you gotta try to take off. Um, you can buy these at the hardware store usually, something close to it if you do end up breaking it. Mine should come off relatively easy because I've already taken it off, but you might have to get a little flathead screwdriver and kind of pry it down. Put that, if it's still in good condition, put it in a safe spot so you don't lose it. Anyways, <laughs> we're gonna pry this down here you can take that off and then there's a little like again I think it's 5 16 head self tapper right here you, you'll have to take that off and now completely separate the heater cable from the cluster and now would be a good time is if this thing's stuck now's either a good time to replace it if you were able to find a replacement cable or to actually just take it completely out and lube the shit out of it and most and sometimes you can bring them around that's what I ended up doing with this one all right now let me get that off and I'll take the rest of the stuff apart fasteners off too of course you can just put them right back where they came from kind of helps with keeping them in, in the same spot 
for keeping them, knowing where they all went before you took it apart, you know, when you're going to put it back together. All right, let's see. All right, so again, make sure you take pictures before you remove stuff. like a million different damn bulbs you gotta take out of this thing. Come on. Of course the last connector is always the one that doesn't work. Come on. Come on, baby. Oops. Not to worry, I already just broke the what was left of that trap, the shifter indicator. Oh, I just had you off now. Why aren't you coming off? Come on now. Holy Moses, okay. And she's free. All right, so it's out. So now you can see all the connectors and everything, all the heater control connectors again. Take pictures, label everything if you have to, so you know where it all goes when you connect it back together. As you can see, this is the these are the wires that fell out of that uh, plastic connector the terminals, but I already know what where that's supposed to go to. Here is these are the original wires for the ammeter. If you still have an ammeter, you'll see this big yellow one and this big red one. Um, I, again, I bypassed it and put in a voltmeter because um, these are known over age. You know, wires get crusty and old and previous owners hacking and tacking and doing crazy wiring fixes. So I just eliminated it to a voltmeter. Um, I'm not going to go into depth about how to do the swap because there's a great video done on it by 4High Garage. Check them out. Great video. Great guy, he did a great, I don't know him, um, not that I know him, I'm just saying, I watched the video, it was a great video, definitely uh, pretty good on how to do that. So, as far as wiring going for that, the way I did it was, because you see, I uh, taped this guy up, because this one's live, this one I completely eliminated the other one, because this all goes in uh, with the alternator originally. So what I did was I just found a 12 volt switch source from the fuse block, ran a new wire to the multimeter, or multimeter, to the voltmeter, and then I just grounded it to the dash, ran a ground wire to the dash. But anyways, so yeah, this is now a good time to replace all the bulbs. If you haven't, I, mostly all these bulbs actually worked, but I just replaced them because, you know, it's 4D something old vehicle, don't know of the original bulbs. Figured, well, I have it out, now's the perfect time to replace them. You can even swap it all with LED light bulbs if you wanted to. I didn't because um, I kind of like the old school look. So, anywho, now's a good time to replace the pedometer cable if you need to because you get to it easily. And at least lube it up. And I'm probably going to try to see if I can wrangle all these wires and secure them and make it a little bit neater instead of just a cluster wiring mess disaster right here. Anyways, all right, well now I'm gonna go to it and take this guy apart. As you can see, it's, it's already appealing. I'm hoping it comes off relatively easily. And replace this guy here. And then replace that that uh, temperature gauge I told you about. So I'm gonna go do that. I might do a video on that. It might be a completely separate video from this, but this is, that's a, this is exactly how you pull the cluster. And Installations exactly the reverse. So I'm not gonna go in depth about installing it because it's exactly the reverse. And as long as you took pictures, relabel things, and kept all your screws and everything, it won't be hard to put back together, right? So again, just when you go to put it back in, just be careful because it's old. You don't want to crack it. Um, again, I, as you can see, I put keep her back on just so I don't lose it and I put some screws 
the nuts back on because I didn't lose them. All right, well, thanks for watching the video and stay tuned. So you can see, it turned out really nice, the cluster. Looks real sharp. Looks way better. Yep, I'm in love. 10 out of 10, recommend doing if you have a Wagoneer. Or a J10, J10 or a 20, any full size Jeep. I definitely recommend doing the overlay. Makes it look nice and sharp and crisp. Like brand new. Alright, stay tuned for more stuff coming.